Hello, my name is David. I'm part of the Lichtwerkstatt team. That's a makerspace here at the Apple Center of Photonics at the University of Jena. And in this video, we are going to show you how you record yourself in front of a blackboard and yeah, record a lecture, for example, where you need the blackboard to put some formulas on it or whatever. Um, so you might need some external camera or sound. So therefore, we provide another video. Um, so watch that if you haven't set up everything you need to do the record. We are going to talk about in this video about how to detect a source or to pick a source for your recording, how to set up the recording in the right way, um, how to start the recording. And finally, we will show you how to create a file that you can upload on a platform like Moodle, which is called the Remux. So let's get started with your recordings. So here at the upper center of Photonics, we have a setup already installed and you will find um, on the desktop two folders. One is materials and the other one is recordings. In materials, we will provide um, some slides on, uh, yeah, some intro slides and outro slides. And on the recordings, everything is saved uh, in that folders, what you produce. So let's start the software, OBS. Okay, so what you can see here now is you have just this uh, preview area, um, which is black. Um, and the first thing we need to do um, is we have to pick a source which is recorded. So you click here on the plus, um, little plus, and you can choose from different sources. In our case, because we want to capture the blackboard, um, we uh, select the video capture device. And then you can name it because if you, for example, if you have um, different camera setups or different cameras, it might be useful to give it a name. So you can just call that camera one and then you click OK. And then what you can see here now <clears throat> is that you have a small video camera, which is our external camera um, from Logitech right there. But you could also choose the one which is internal in your laptop. So let me show you this. So here, here you can see it. But if you want to record the blackboard, it's much better to use an external camera because of the quality. <clears throat> so what do you have to do next? So first you should select the resolution and FPS type. So as you can see that um, the little preview window is not fitting um, the black window of the software and to make or to get a good quality resolution, you should definitely um, uh, change that. So you go to custom and then in our case, our camera can capture full HD videos. You um, use a resolution, which is full HD, um, 1920 times 1080. You just click on that, wait, click on that. Um, I missed it. So here, now you can see that the preview is fitting the black um, preview area of the software. <clears throat> um, and then you're all set. So you just click um, OK. And then what you could do if you have, for example, a camera that doesn't have that resolution that is fitting. Um, so for example, if it's a smaller preview, you can also make it bigger. But um, the thing is that if the resolution, you should always go with the highest resolution so that you have a good quality uh, in the end. So <clears throat> in our case now, you see we have um, chosen the source for the video. Um, the next step is that we have to add the audio. For doing that, you just go again to the plus sign and pick audio, um, not output, that was wrong. You pick um, audio input because you want to record your voice. You could also use different devices, so you could name it. In our case, we just keep it with the standard name. Um, and then you can choose which kind of mic you want to use. Do you want to use the internal one, which would be the microphone Realtek in our case here, or do you want to use the external one, which is better quality from Logitech in our case, and we choose um, the Logitech one and click OK. So now you can see that the audio is activated by, when you look here on the bar, um, you see that it uh, yeah, captures your audio. The next thing is, um, as you can see here, um, coming back to the camera, it's very important that you have a good position for the camera. So for example, if you uh, move in front of the camera, and, I don't know, move the blackboard, um, it's important that you position your external camera in that way 
that all of the blackbird is capture, captured so that your students can still see if you put it up. Okay. So, seems like we have set up the hardware pretty well. So now let's go to some more detailed settings. So therefore we click here on the settings and then um, look into the video um, on, yeah, that's the first step. And for example, you can see here now that it's, the video is recorded in full HD, but the output style of the video should actually be a little bit smaller so that you have a little smaller um, file size, which is important if you want to upload it somewhere. Um, you should always try to have a small file. Um, so if you do normal HD, that should be sufficient for your students. So we just select that. Um, so it's 1,280 times 720. So if you do that, then you reduce, you reduce um, your file size um, a lot. Another thing um, when we talk about the file size is that you should look at the FPS rate, frames per second. Sometimes you have 60 frames per second, which is not needed um, in our case or in our scenario. So you should um, just keep it like it is here uh, with 30 frames per second. That should be also uh, sufficient for your video um, quality. Okay, then we can have a look on the audio. Um, in our case, we just keep it as it is. Uh, you could for sure also reduce it a little bit if you lower the quality of a sound, but it makes more sense to do that um, on the video part because yeah, then the file is much smaller than if you would reduce the audio quality. Um, the last step is to go into the audio uh, and into the output file. Um, and there we can talk about the bit rate um, which can also help you to reduce the file size. Um, first, uh, you can check here before you, we talk about the bitrate, we talk a little bit about the recording quality. So you can see here there's high quality, um, also you have a low quality, which will also um, make the file smaller. But um, in our case, we just pick same as, uh, as stream because even if you pick the lowest quality, it might be not small enough for your file size. Because video data tends to get large, very large, a video stream has to get compressed so the data can be transferred in real time. The rate of compression is usually specified by the size of data per second. Although we are recording a video here to a hard drive, instead of streaming it live to the internet, the so-called bitrate is a very practical tool to control file sizes. To shorten your upload time, save server space or space of your institution and network capabilities of your students, you should always tend to minimize the file size of your video files. If you are, ex for example, don't want to exceed one gigabyte of data for 19 minutes of a lecture, you have 8,000 megabits for 5,400 seconds, which results in a bit rate of 1.48 megabits per second, respectively 1,480 kilobits per second. The necessary bit rate depends on the shown course content and typeface as well size of your blackboard writings. Please record a preceding short quality test in the desired bit rate if unsure if the quality fits your requirements. So in our case, because we don't want to um, over exceed uh, the one gigabyte, um, we put in um, that field here 1,480 kilobytes per second. And then we are all set. We click on apply. OK. And we can start our recording. So don't start the streaming, which uh, is used for yeah streaming. Um, you should start the recording because you want to have um, later on a file that you can upload somewhere. So let's do so. So now you could walk because it's um, around and use the Blackboard, for example, to do some very basic stuff. So for example, you can explain E equals MC squared to your students. And that's probably one of the most important things you can teach them. So we are done now with that little um, lecture here. Your lectures will probably go a little bit longer. Um, but we will do now um, stop our recording.
So let's talk a little bit about the Remux, um, how to get a file out of your recordings. For Remux, you will have to understand the context. As mentioned before, you will have to compress video data. There are several algorithms for this, one quite famous and also used by default here is the H264. These algorithms are called codecs and you might have heard other ones like MPEG or AAC or MP3. This compressed video data is then stored into a container file, which you can recognize from the file ending. Screen and videocast software like OBS often records in the Matroshka MKV container format, which is very suitable for streaming. But common video platforms and players only allow the file formats like MP4. OBS allows to record directly as MP4, which is not recommended because MKV is very robust against file corruption, and even if your computer breaks down during a recording session, for example, you can use MKV recording, which is not the case with MP4 files. To get your MP4 anyway, OBS has a built-in Remux functionality, which transferred video data from one container into another container format. So therefore, just click on File, Remux Recordings, and then choose your recording. So let's do that, clear finished one. So you just pick the recording you just did. So for example, in our case, the uh, E equals MC square, and you open it, and then you can see that there is a target file, um, which will be converted into um, M MP4. Um, you could also select multiple other ones at the same time. So what you have to do now um, to finish your file um, you just click on Remux. In our case, it was pretty fast because we recorded only a few seconds. Um, you click on OK, and then let's check um, if it's in the folder. So I close this down, and as we know from the beginning of the video, all of our video data is uh, stored in the recordings folder. So we open that up, and then you see here is the MK MKV file, which is the standard file but we want to have to upload it on Moodle, for example, the MP4. So let's have a quick look on so that file. now you could walk because it's um, around and use the Blackboard, for example, to do some very basic stuff. So for example, you can... Thank you for watching our video on Blackboard recording. We hope it was helpful for you and you can soon start to upload your own lectures for your students on a platform like Moodle. Um, if you want to go into more details on the software side, we also have a more advanced OBS um, software tutorial. Um, we also offer a tutorial on editing and on how to upload um, your video finally to make it accessible for your students. So yeah, have fun by using this tool and see you soon.